Hey everybody, it's Noel from Motoring Middle East. We are in sunny Las Vegas and we are at the famous SEMA Motor Show. We have got everything here. You name it, you've got custom cars, lifted trucks, old, new, rims, everything. You're gonna love it. So we're gonna go take a look around. Let's go. Okay, I'm here with Joe Dana, he's the uh, director of Mopar, so uh, we're going to run through this uh, power wagon and exactly what it's got on it basically, so um, tell, how did this come about? Well, I mean, this is a very cool truck. Oh, it's, it's awesome. It's uh, almost a caricature of itself. So earlier this year we uh, unveiled the uh, 2017 production power wagon, which uh, we had a all new face for the vehicle, all new wheel design, new graphics and uh, kind of a step back into the past as far as its influence on the 1978 W150 uh, uh, Macho Power Wagon. So we thought, wow, how appropriate it'd be to take our uh, new truck and kind of create a caricature of itself and call it the Macho Power Wagon with the uh, standard uh, orange paint. Uh, in fact, we call this uh, Macho Mango. And uh, you can see on the interior some of that color influence coming through on some of the uh, trim bezels and parts like that. But the exterior is really kind of a uh, uh, super duper version of the production truck. And it's, and it's got a 4 inch lift, it's got 18 inch B block wheels, uh, 37 inch OB tires, etc., etc., etc. So it's really, really cool. And what we've been able to do on the interior is pretty neat. It's interesting actually because the Power Wagon is a, for the Middle East markets, a bit, it's a very iconic name because oh, yes. the Power Wagon was one of the first vehicles to kind of open the country up for oil exploration mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it's viewed very uh, in a very positive light yes. already. So, um, and then we like our big trucks, um, you know, the competitions, sort of sports SUVs sell very well. So this is, uh, is there any? Is there any thought about bringing some of these accessories to market? I, I know you were saying uh, in the presentation last night that you kind of use this as a bit of a feedback test bed to, to know whether or not we think that these are good products. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we've always, uh, whenever we do these builds, we always have a myriad of uh, production parts that are already available from the Mopar catalog. So, you know, slush mats, uh, sill plates, uh, pedal uh, accessories, things like pedal kit that you see on the interior here. So we're always going to offer that. But on top of that, we're always looking for new ideas. Like uh, on the exterior of this vehicle, we've got some really uniquely styled running boards. We've got this ram rack system on the rear that uh, is very uh, uh, integrated into the power wagon design and uh, continues to make it iconic as far as its uh, design aesthetic. So, but we, we try to do all that stuff because we're always looking for feedback from you guys, uh, the customers, uh, dealers, et cetera, et cetera, to see if there's a market for this. Just to uh, just to clarify, the the, um, the ram rack on the back is basically a kind of rear support that can slide backwards and forwards. Correct. Correct. And you can actually hide it under the cowl at the back. Yeah, we have kind of a sport bar that we've styled into the uh, top of the bed, and uh, when you go into the aftermarket, you look at some of these. Uh, uh, rack systems, they're, they look a little commercial. They're not necessarily, they're kind of cut and weld and bend, and they're not necessarily styled. And so we thought it'd be kind of cool to come up with a, a very styled version of that. So for the active outdoors person that either kayaks, canoes, uh, camps, what have you, and they need uh, this upper rack support for these long items, it's, it's just perfect. For that. And ours actually functions too. It's not just a bunch of pretty parts, ours actually functions. And, uses the existing Mopar uh, in-bed uh, rail system. So it's something that would be an accessory on top of something that's already available today. And I assume easy to bring to market as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. 
fantastic. Yeah, well, it's an amazing vehicle. I think uh, I think well, you'd have a few you. buyers for this uh, purchase this oh, one yeah. uh, across the Middle East. So uh, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Thank cool. you so much. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Noah. Brilliant. Okay, so we're back again with uh, Joe Dana here in the um, in the Challenger Shakedown. That's it, the Shakedown. So this this is frankly the most incredible car I think I've ever seen. So um, <laughs> I, first of all, I want to know um, how I can ship it to Dubai. Oh, okay. So that would be my first question. Um, and secondly, tell us a little, tell us a bit about it. How did this concept come about? Because this is actually an old car. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the, the Dodge icons, Dodge Challenger. So you want Dodge Challenger? And uh, we brought it back to life, and it's uh, courtesy of uh, a lot of modern technology, not only on the interior and the exterior, but also on the hood. So this was a, uh, a car that we kind of had a thesis statement about. Normally when we do these concepts for one car, we focus on the modern uh, or current uh, models. But this one uh, was a little bit different, and uh, courtesy of a heart transplant in the hood, as I mentioned, we were wanting to give it a new lease on it. So even on the interior here, we've uh, got these awesome Viper seats that we were able to uh, shoehorn into the interior. We've got half of the roll cage in the back, the rear seat in the uh, custom instrument panel, Mopar gauges, Viper steering wheel. We've uh, got these nice carbon fiber inserts, so this is a six-speed transmission. So it's really cool what we were able to do and still kind of keep the blast from the past uh, some of the Then on the exterior, we've got just a plethora of lights we're in. We made a 2017 Dodge Challenger uh, headlamps, the front fascia inserts, and tail lamps. Uh, got the Hellcat slingshot wheel, uh, 20s on the rear, next one's on the front, the right stack, shaker hood. And then we came up with this really cool ring shape. Kind of thought it was kind of a salute to the past once again, this uh, kind of it's triple black, black interior, black wheels. It's really cool. So the, uh, I mean, it works really well. I mean, you've got these, you've got a modern steering wheel, and you have a kind of old, uh, yes. sort of old parts in here as well. And key to key as well is obviously it's a manual as well, yes. so you can properly play with this as well. Yes. What sort of, uh, what sort of power is this machine? Uh, it's uh, 485 horsepower, um, and it's. Um, Six four uh, engine, so it's uh, and the car is relatively lightweight. I think the car weighs uh, about thirty seven hundred pounds, so um, it's it's you know kind of in the sweet spot, so to speak, for a car of this vintage. Yeah. Did, did, does it carry over the um, things like uh, traction control and ABS and things like that? Or is no, it, is it's it old school. It's old school. Yeah, in fact, there's not even any AC on here, so <laughs> <laughs> we got to cut. Driving in an environment like uh, Las Vegas where it's really hot, it probably wouldn't be very fun. But um, but we we build it to kind of bridge this drift car slash pro touring slash track car. So it's kind of a mashup of these three trends that are going on. And uh, and I think we the design team did a pretty successful job because it, it does have a really nice stance to it. Heads. And it kind of plays games with people because they see certain things on the exterior about, wait a minute, that looks like the current Challenger. Wait, no, this is an old Challenger, but it's got new Challenger parts on it, so it's kind of cool. Exactly, yeah, perfect. Yeah, well, I mean, all that, all I've got to do now is get a quote for shipping it. That's oh, okay. That's my, we'll my key thing. That. So, we'll work yeah, on that. I'll, I'll, uh, and I know where the guy with the key is now. So that's exactly. Yeah, that's kind of brilliant. Thank you so awesome. much. Thank brilliant. You. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Nico Varis. I'm the design manager of Mopar Design here in Product Design Office here in PDO. I'm going to take you through the 1971 Shakedown concept car for a 2016 SEMA. Um, this is a pretty cool project here. Um, it, it's a combination of modern and historic uh, elements. Um, we took a 71 Challenger, Dodge Challenger body and infused the 2017 elements. Uh, so you can see the front lighting is uh, from a 2017 Challenger that was morphed into the 71 body uh, to give this modern feel. So the aura of the car is a pro touring effect. So we wanted to put a, a modern engine and modern suspension and combined it uh, with an historic vehicle. Um, some of the cool features on the front is a front full width splitter. Uh, the wheels are slingshot Hellcat wheels. The front one was reduced in size by one inch. It's a 19 by nine and a half front wheel. Uh, and the rear is a, a stocked slingshot Hellcat wheel. It's a 20 by nine and a half, and it also has uh, six piston uh, Brembo brakes on it uh, up front, two piece rotors. Uh, so again, playing up that modern performance aspect of it. On the fender, we designed a really cool 392 crate uh, Mopar badge uh, that kind of is sympathetic with the modern powertrain. So it's kind of a nice little detail on the side of the vehicle. Also, to point out, there's uh, an offset asymmetrical stripe that runs from nose to tail on this vehicle. Uh, we designed a cool shakedown badge that goes on top of the historic 1971 shaker scoop. So this scoop is a, a lot wider than our, our production scoop on the 2017 Challenger shaker. If you notice, the drip rail along the DLO, the door handles, and the fuel doors all have been shaved off the vehicle to give this real clean appearance uh, and this modern feel. Around back, uh, you can again see the 2017 tail lamp uh, from the Challenger. So uh, what's really cool about this is there is a split line that comes through the lamp on the 2017 vehicle. We got rid of that lamp. The deck lid stops above the lamp here and we were able to get this seamless appearance with the the signature lighting on the rear, the racetrack signature lighting. Uh, Mopar exhaust tips, powder coated in gloss black. And as we walk around the vehicle again, uh, I'll pop the, the door for you. And again, there's no door handle, so there's a key fob to open up the, uh, the door. Um, the interior is sports uh, the Viper seats. Two Viper seats that are custom trimmed by Catskin. It's got a Viper steering wheel. Uh, and it, again, this play on modern materials, modern components in this historic vehicle. So the shell of the vehicle, the interior is the same volume as the 1971. So there's, there's nothing that was changed volume wise or proportion wise on the interior, but all these modern elements were, were placed into the, the, the interior. So if you notice, the center council has an inlay of carbon fiber. The IP cluster has a, an inlay of carbon fiber and uh, black face Mopar gauges that are available uh, through Mopar. In case you're wondering where the fuel fill door was, we remoted it in the trunk with a fuel cell, and that's where it is. And this is a 2016 SEMA shakedown concept car. Hi, my name is Nico Vardas. I'm the design manager of Mopar Design here in PDO. And I'm going to take you around the CJ66 concept car. So this was a cool vehicle that we designed in our PDO studio. Um, it's three generations of, of Jeeps. It's a JK, CJ, and TJ. So it has a, a CJ body, extended wheelbase, uh, a, a JK front elements, front bumper, uh, beadlock wheel. Uh, and a TJ frame. Uh, so some of the features on the vehicle are the JK uh, forward lighting that are all LED. It's, uh, a combination of the CJ and a JK hood. Uh, so we took uh, a Rubicon hood and grafted onto a CJ. So all the, the perimeters are all kind of mated up to the old historic body. Uh, another element on the vehicle is we widened the, the flares out to accommodate the big large tires and wheels. 
Uh, these are 35 inch tires, so really want to create a, a, a very wide appearance in the vehicle. So uh, it's, it's kind of a, a mind warp because the vehicle, the CJ66, the 1966 CJ was a narrow body and we put these big tires on so you had to come out and fill the space up with the, the flares. So that's, that's what we have going on here. So as we walk around the vehicle, uh, it has a, a unique concept uh, rock rail that we've developed. Uh, it's all hand fabricated, so it's uh, kind of in vain with the character of the, the historic vehicle. And again, this vehicle was a combination of three gens, so it was really challenging to get uh, everything to work properly. So the designer on this vehicle is Jeremy Rolfs, and he did an awesome job putting this thing together. Um, and uh, he had a ton of excitement creating the vehicle and uh, having fun with it. Around the back, if you come around here, there's a TJ uh, LED lights on the back, uh, concept lights. And the, the rear bumpers are JK Rubicon bumpers, or 10th anniversary bumpers. So again, a combination of a historic vehicle and modern elements all bundled up in one, uh, one piece. And uh, if you look inside the, the back here, that's a, a remote tire. So it's kind of a Baja-esque uh, kind of statement. It's, it's really cool. It's a quick release. The gate drops down. You can access the tire. And there's a really cool element here. It's a kind of a custom fuel-filled door that's uh, kind of exposed. So as we walk around the vehicle, I'll, we'll scoot inside of it. There's um, two Viper seats <laughs> that were, uh, were placed into it. So again, a really crazy combination of modern and historic. So if you notice that the dashboard is all um, kind of in vain of the historic vehicle. So very simplistic, very clean. The body color kind of kind of uh, comes into the interior. Um, so very simplistic, very fun. Um, and there's one, one thing as you look out the windshield, the windshield has been cropped and, and, and uh, chopped two inches. Uh, so again, a little subtlety that we've, uh, we've done on the vehicle to, uh, to again, give you this really cool effect of a, a modern uh, kind of feel. Um, the one other thing that I want to touch base on with in the front end is we had a section the front f fenders to an uh, inch and a half to accommodate the, the cooling that was required uh, when we dropped in the modern powertrain. The CJ66 also has an inflation and deflation system on the, on the vehicle and it's all operated on the side of the vehicle so you can uh, inflate the tires and deflate the tires on the fly which is really cool. And uh, that wraps it up for the CJ66 or 2016 SEMA concept. <laughs>